Hi, my name is Dalian Carter and I would like to share with you this presentation that addresses the analysis concepts related to a specific issue in healthcare. Here, we will be able to understand and use trend analysis, common sizing, and forecasted data. Here are the highlights of the presentation. How might you use trend analysis and comparative analysis as a financial manager in healthcare? What are the benefits and challenges associated with the three different sources of information for forecasts? How do assumptions impact revenue forecasts? How would common sizing and trend analysis be used to better understand capacity? Using comparative analysis is important for financial managers to set common ground for planning, control, and decision-making purposes. First, let's discuss trend analysis. So, what is trend analysis? Trend analysis is the presentation of amounts as a percentage of a base year. It compares figures over several time periods. For example, if you want to see the trend of a company's stockholders' equity during the years 2007 through 2008, trend analysis will present 2007 as the base year. An example of trend analysis is contained in Table 1. In this case, the total stockholders' equity in 2008 was 829,500, but was only 787,500 in 2007. There is a difference of 42,000 incre increase which equates to 5.3% because trend analysis is computed on the earlier of the two years. That is 42,000 divided by 787,500 equals 5.3%. Trend analysis sometimes is also called horizontal analysis because the computation of the percentage of difference is horizontal. Here is an example of trend analysis for assets in Table 2. First, we deduct the amount in 2007 from 2008, then divide the difference by the base year. For example, in cash, the amount in 2007 is 64,700 and in 2008 is 90,500. There is a difference of 25,800. So, 25,800 divided by 64,700 equals 39.9 percent. There you go. Now let's go to common sizing. Common sizing involves converting dollar amounts to percentages. Converting dollar to percentages allow comparative analysis. Comparing the percentages allows a common basis of comparison. Common sizing puts data on the same relative basis. Here is an example of common sizing. If total revenue of 200,000 equals 100%, then radiology revenue of 20,000 will equal 10% of that total. So, 20,000 divided by 200,000 equals 10%. Sometimes, common sizing is also called vertical analysis because the computation of percentages is vertical. Common sizing converts numbers to percentages so that comparative analysis can be performed. The worksheet below shows the assets of two hospitals. So, let's say current assets of Hospital A is $2,000. 2,000 divided by total assets of 10,000 equals 20%. Therefore, 
the common sizing for current assets is 20%. Table 4 shows an example of common sizing for liabilities. In this example, it shows how common sizing allows a comparison of liabilities for three different hospitals. In each case, the total liabilities equal 100%. Then, the current liabilities, for example, are divided by total liabilities to find the proportionate percentage attributable to that line item. For example, in Hospital 1, the current liabilities is 100,000 and the total liabilities is 500,000. So, 100,000 divided by 500,000 equals 20%. Then, the long-term debt is 400,000 divided by 500,000 equals 80%. 20% plus 80% equals 100%. The next topic I'm going to talk about is forecasted data. To forecast means to calculate or predict some future event usually as a result of study and analysis of available pertinent data. So, from the financial manager's viewpoint, forecasted data are information used for purposes of planning for the future. There are benefits and challenges associated with the three different sources of information for forecasts. Number one is the first level, number two, second level, and number three is third level. The first level derives from the personnel who are directly involved in the department or unit. They know the operation and can provide inf important ground level detail. The second level comes from electronic and statistical information including trend analysis. Electronic reports can provide a thicket of inf information and there is a skill to selecting relevant information for forecasting purposes. The third level represents executive level judgment that is typically applied to a preliminary rough draft of the forecast. For example, adjusting volume upward or downward due to the anticipated future impact of local competition would most likely be an executive level judgment. These approaches are important when producing budgets. Now, how do assumptions impact revenue? Assumptions affect forecasted results because they are the basis of the numbers in your forecast. Example, computing a staff requirement of three lab technicians requires an assumption. Computing the salary and friends benefits for each of the technicians requires another assumption. When the salary and friends uh, benefit dollars are computed for the three lab technicians, the resulting figure becomes part of your forecast. There are five important issues regarding revenue forecast assumptions and number one is utilization assumptions. In healthcare, changes in utilization patterns can be occurring that need to be taken into account in the manager's forecast assumptions. Next is patient mix assumptions. It is important to specify anticipated patient mix to identify patient's insurance coverage. When identified, this information allows the appropriate payments to be associated with the service utilization assumptions. Contractual Allowance Assumptions In healthcare, contractual allowance is the difference between what hospitals bill and what they receive in payment from third-party payers, most commonly government programs. In Trend Analysis Assumptions, they compare data between and among years and to see the trends. If trends are found, then take them into account in your forecast. The fifth one is payer change assumptions. Payer change assumptions is the process of addressing changes dictated by emerging market trends, regulatory requirements, 
and technology innovations. Key to this in uh, transformation is the pivoting of existing transactional capabilities augmented by emerging technology initiatives. This is an example of payers change assumptions. In healthcare, capacity relates to services, that is, the ability to produce or provide specific healthcare services. Capacity level issues in forecasting include limited space and equipment, and staffing availability is difficult, such as overcapacity and undercapacity. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Stay successful and have a good day.